what have we got, five minutes or so. I've been playing around with virtualization as a way of presenting things you can't otherwise present. And this is the good, the bad, and the ugly of virtualization. Virtualization, buzzword, 10 second thing, could mean anything to anybody. In this particular concept, the idea of presenting a virtual machine on another machine, or like an inception, a dream within a dream. What is this Windows junk asking me for this time? Um, <laughs> but I do not use Windows too much. Um, there are three pictures, um, and a website over here. And for those who want to follow up later, called Untitled 1, Untitled 2, Untitled 3. I see I didn't spend a great deal of effort. <laughs> uh, we can open this with preview. Looks good, doesn't it, up here? So this is running a Windows with an XP box within a nice, happy Mac background. So we can run a box inside another box. And under the popular Untitled 2, if we're lucky, we can see, hey, it even turns on with the custom Windowsy stuff and the annoying background too. And with a bit of work, you can see this is a mapped drive. This is a drive on the host machine seen inside the client machine. And with a bit more work, but I haven't done that, you can also port map the host machine onto the client machine. Here's the good. The good is you can set up your virtual box inside your machine. You've got full admin privileges. You can do what the heck you want. The students can do what the heck they want. And when they make a complete pig's ear of it, and you can bet they will, then rather than having to sort it out, oh, the pain, you just delete the virtual image, put a new one on, they're back to square one again. What I was doing was setting up LAMP servers, which varies on the student's ability to read instructions and think a bit from being dead easy to absolutely impossible. So it's a nice way, and when they make a pig's ear of it, you just roll it back and do it again the virtual machines work tidy like that. Um, now, the virtual machine itself, due to the magic of computing stuff, can get onto the internet, and it uses the based-in proxy server. So if you've got a school or college proxy server that bans various internet sites, then the virtual machine can pick up that proxy server. It's got the same rules, so that if the main college site doesn't let you access some site with young ladies who can't afford any clothes, then neither will the one inside the virtual machine. Wait, hey. Um, a major problem that is that the host machine, by default, can't see the virtual machine. So if you set up a, a web server on the virtual machine, and then you want to access it from another machine, which would be a nice idea if web servers do that sort of thing, then you're cooked. But with the magic of port mapping and running a few scripts that aren't rocket science, you can open up and then map the host port onto the client port. That's the good, that's the great. The bad, um, there are various solutions, and most require the tech support unit to install it for you. You need permissions to, you can't just whack it in yourself, which is a bit of a bummer. One that doesn't is QEMU, however you pronounce, I have no idea, QEMU, which can run some Raspberry Pi images and can run a DSL, damn small Linux image. Pop it in, run from your USB stick, you're good to go on installation, good. two thumbs up, goodness. Um, the ugly is that having got some access to the virtual machine, it's all looking good and tidy and so forth, it requires somewhere to put that virtual image. So you could have them on a shared drive, in which case they're all sharing the same virtual image. No, no, panic, panic's not going to work. Or better still, it's on the hard drive somewhere. Ah, panic, danger. <laughs> Meaning that it, ideally a student wants an access to the virtual image on the local hard drive that they, he or she can play around with, and then you as the client or the student or the teacher can come and set this back to a normal. So they have that virtual machine, do what they want to do, make a right pig's ear of it, you come back in as a teacher, and then you set it back to normal. That's the bad news, because you would think you've got additional work in, checking it's okay, refreshing the images, removing the messed up ones and putting the good ones back up there. So tech support is set you up with some sort of um, passworded partition on the local drive or individual ones on the server for each student. No, don't go there. Um, so they can access and play around like that. For those who are not completely bored, I'm almost done. I've bobbed it on the web. Now we're working um, offline over here, so where's the file browser gone? Um, it'll say virtual, virtual, virtual. This is offline, so I've got, this is um, my website. On that, I've put a brief summary of what I've talked about, and I've put some links um, down there to some walkthroughs you can work up there. The real URL, this is the local one, is gradebowin.co.uk. I'm sure somebody, a magician with a camera, can put that down the bottom of the screen when I'm done. There we are. Jobs, jobs. Thank you. <laughs>